So in research for the serial killer iceberg, as well as just other stories of serial killers doing serial killer activities, I kept seeing mention of something called the hair psychopathy checklist. Like for example, whenever researching Paul Bernardo for the serial killer iceberg, it said that he scored a 35 out of 40. And Clifford Olson scored a 38 out of 40. And people like Ted Bundy got a 39 out of 40. So obviously I got curious, where's this scoreboard? So I did some research and the hair psychopathy checklist is a 20 question sheet that is used by trained psychiatrists and psychological professionals as a means of determining if someone is a psychopath or not. Most often this gets brought up whenever the defense team argues not guilty by reason of insanity, so this is one of the tests that a psychiatrist or court sanctioned whatever will perform. According to the psychology wiki, which not sure how like scientific that is, but close enough. The description for the Hare Psychopathy Checklist is, in contemporary research and clinical practice, Robert D. Hare Psychopathy Checklist Revised is the psychodiagnostic tool most commonly used to assess psychopathy. Because an individual's score may have important consequences for his or her, her, his or her future, and because the potential for harm if the test is used or administered incorrectly is considerable, the test should only be considered valid if administered by a suitably qualified and experienced clinical under certain conditions or cl clinician. But why didn't they just say doc or whatever? And of course I consider myself suitably qualified as well as an experienced that word. And I haven't looked at any of the questions, so I figured why not go through this together? Now I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. It's kind of still a stigma that not a lot of people are aware of, but being a psychopath does not make you a monster. All that being a psychopath means is that you either can't or have trouble experiencing empathy and emotions. That's the reason that so many serial killers are considered down that line of thought, because the grisly things that they do are considered so apart from our understanding of empathy that they have to have some sort of hindrance when it comes to feeling it. But there are thousands, if not millions of people in the world who have some form of a psychopath syndrome. The reason several serial killers have some form of a psychopath disorder is because from a young age, it was not cultivated in the way it should have been. And they turned to outlets like violence and pain as a means of dealing with these complex emotions they didn't understand. But far more people who have neurodivergent symptoms like this go on to live perfectly healthy, normal lives rather than becoming these evil people that we talk about. It's just weird that the terms kind of become synonymous with like psycho and serial killer and stuff like that but it's really far from it. But of course, if there's a 20 question questionnaire that determines if serial killers have this condition, of course I'm gonna go through it on this channel. And also, I am going to sort of go through and check off the tick marks myself, and you're welcome to do the same at home, but do not take this <laughs> as a final authority at all. As it said several times, do not take this seriously at all unless it's like a qualified psychiatrist or someone else who's qualified directly delivering you the questions. Because for one, the way that this is supposed to be done is it is a questionnaire about a person being interviewed. And it doesn't really work the same if you're asking the questions about yourself. So if you do this at home and get like a 36, or I guess if I get like a 36, do not take that too seriously. Even in court, whenever this is officially done, it's not a final say if someone's a psychopath or not. It's just another piece of information to point towards the potential that they might be. So psychopaths are still people and are not crazy monsters like some believe and do not take this too seriously. This is not official at all. It's just for fun. Yeah, I think that should do it. Just because you may test high on this test or just because you may be a psychopath, it doesn't mean you're crazy. But do you know what would make you crazy? Not worrying about your internet password security. So it really would be crazy to not get Dashlane. If you want to make your life online easier and more secure, try Dashlane. Dashlane gives you everything you need to easily manage your passwords and keep them secure. With Dashlane, logging into a website is as easy as clicking login and letting Autofill do the rest. Autofill also works with credit cards and addresses to make your online shopping seamless and easy. Dashlane also works on multiple devices, so if you need to log into an account on your phone, tablet, or desktop, you'll always have access to your passwords and account information. If you find this as helpful as I do, you can try Dashlane for free 
free on your first device at dashlane.com forward slash Wendigoon. And if you decide to upgrade to premium, you can use my code Wendigoon for 50% off. So you can take Dashlane, try it out for free, and if you like it, get the whole package for half off what's not to love. Thank you to everyone for watching the ad. Thank you so much to Dashlane for sponsoring the video. It really means a lot. And now we are back to the video, which is about two feet in that direction. So just skip real quick. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into this. But as always, thank you for watching. So I actually found a place to take the like official test online at idrlabs.com. I mean, it seems official enough and they have multiple languages, so it's probably fine. I'll leave a link in the description. So there's 20 questions with the first question being, are you doing this for another person or yourself? And I'm doing myself, so next. Because it has the legit version where you're talking about an individual being studied and one for people on the internet like myself who are just doing this to be a jerk. So all of the questions are on a scale of zero to two. That's why even though there's 20 questions, the highest possible score you can get is 40 because every question is either scored as a zero, one, or a two. A zero being this person does not exhibit these signs of whatever's being asked. A one being they exhibit some characteristics or might exhibit signs of this. And a two being they 100% exhibit characteristics of whatever's being asked. So first question, I have a grandiose sense of self-worth. Um, I have a YouTube channel that's exclusively me describing things. Um, and I don't think that I'm important at all, but I feel like the very fact that I do that's contradictory. Um, I can't remember if it's Shane Dawson who said it or someone in one of those big like breakdown videos about some YouTuber, but they said every YouTuber to some degree has to be a psychopath because they've built an entire sort of like platform around themselves, which I guess. So off that alone, I'm gonna give myself a two. <laughs> it applies very well. Oh boy. I have a history of juvenile delinquency and or crime. <laughs> Um, no, I have not been any official crimes that anyone knows about. So for the sake of myself on the internet, I'm going to say no, does not apply as far as you need to know. Next question. I have often tricked, conned, and or manipulated people. Um, I mean, a lot of people click on my videos expecting them to be good and then they get me staring into a computer screen asking myself BuzzFeed questions, so... Yeah, I'd say that applies pretty well. I am callous and or lack empathy. Uh, I care about everything way too much all the time, so. <laughs> the closest thing I could say with callous is like, well, no, not even that. I was gonna say like, if someone keeps messing up, I like lose care after like the subsequent mess ups, but that's just people like, yeah, I'm overthinking it, okay. I have broken many different types of laws. <laughs> In other words, my law breaking has not been restricted to any single domain such as sexual, financial, or similar. Oh, I guess that's saying like, when it comes to people in court being tested, even though they may be a serial killer, they probably exhibit other things like they also broke like street laws or whatever. I, I break traffic laws all the time. Uh, like if it's late at night and I'm driving home and there's a red light and no one on, I just don't care. I'm a good boy. I report income. I think I'm fine. I guess it is true though when I like know there's no one watching and I'm gonna tell on myself a bit like when it comes to red lights or stuff like that I will uh not care because <laughs> I feel a lot of people just kind of follow laws flippantly without really giving any thought or understanding to them and of course there's a place for that when it comes to like traffic laws i'm digging a hole on myself right now but it's a question of would you do something that you know for a fact is senseless because someone else told you to and i guess no so i'm gonna give myself a one on that one i also have like a more official version pulled up that's like what they would actually be asking so after we're done with this i'm gonna check on that and see if they're at least kind of close. I generally evade responsibility and do not answer to anyone in my life. Um, I mean, I'm a YouTuber, so <laughs> I pretty much got to worry about Susan and God. <laughs> when it comes to evading responsibility, like I'm once again emphasizing this is YouTube. My responsibilities are uploading when I feel like it, which can be 
very mistreated, uh, especially for the people who actually care about me online. So I'm gonna say applies very well. I have a history of exhibiting cruelty to others. Um, no. <laughs> I'm getting why this wouldn't make sense if asked like about yourself, because like people like me overanalyze and other people are like, no, I've never been cruel to anyone. And like, yeah, it needs a objective person judging. Um, but I mean, we're this far in, I'm gonna keep going. I've never been cruel to other people. Well, do I wanna embarrass myself on the internet? <laughs> I remember when I was like a really little kid, I did a bunch of dumb bullying stuff just because I was small. And if like there was like a big bully on the playground, I thought it was best to side with him because you know, like strategical advantages. So I would be like a bully at six and seven years old to other people because I thought it would like make me safer, I guess. Um, and I still feel really guilty about it and bad in some cases. Like I remember this specific instance when I was in the second grade that has haunted me like every day since. I remember my second grade classroom, it had like 30 kids in it and it was split up onto two sides of a room with a big walkway going down the middle. So there was a very distinct line between the two. And you know, in the second grade, you take like your spelling test or whatever, and all of the kids would say how they did on the test because no one really cared about like grades at that time. And I'm sure this is like some deeper thing when it comes to sociology and how people exist in environments, but I just, managed to develop some sense of superiority because like our side of the room always did better on their test and like they did better in sports and stuff so i just considered our side the good side and their side the ugly side and i remember that in the line for like leaving to go home one day um some girl was like from from the other side of the room some girl was bothering me um and I remember looking her dead in the face and saying, that's why you're on the ugly side of the room. And um, she like, she I found out later she went home and cried over it. Um, I'm really sad now. <laughs> and it's like, it's probably some bigger concept when it comes to, you know, humanity and like even kids try to develop some sense of like, I'm better than they are. There was one psychology experiment that I think was done in like the 60s where a teacher took a group of kids, probably around the same age, second or third grade, and she took all the brown eyed kids and the blue eyed kids and put them on opposite sides of the room. And then she had all the brown eyed kids for one week, they got like extra lunch time, they got extra recess time, while the blue-eyed kids had to sit inside and do nothing. And after a few days, the brown-eyed kids would be in school and they would say stuff like, well, that's just what they think because they're blue-eyed people. And it was already like these concepts of sort of bigotry and better betterness that started to develop after a week. So then the next week the teacher flipped it and she gave the blue eyed kids the high ground and immediately the blue eyed kids started using it as a way to put down the brown eyed kids. And then it was a really good teacher because at the end she did this whole thing about how it applies to race and classes and how no one's really better than anyone else. It's just people that are given a sort of false sense of betterness that causes them to assert their dominance onto other groups of people. But I distinctly remember reading about that whole thing and thinking, wow, those kids must have been awful. And then I remember that I told that girl she was on the ugly side of the room. And I'll be completely honest, it still bothers me. I'm just like bummed out now, great. <laughs> I didn't want this to be sad. Um, anyway, I'm giving myself a one on that. Uh, Cause I, I like regret it so much. Uh, and I know I'm telling on myself now, but I was in the second grade, but it's just one of those things. It's like, it, there, there's something so weird about people that if given the slightest bit of wiggle room, they'll use it to their advantage to make themselves better than someone else, like every time. And it's, it's depressing. However, people like that teacher are wonderful for recognizing that and then using that position as a way to explain to others why even at a young age you need to cut those out. I had my own lesson with that because I felt guilty about it immediately afterwards. Um, I've rambled for way too long. Okay, I'm giving myself a one. 
Um, even though, of course, I'm remorseful and stuff, I'm pretty sad. <laughs> All right, I've had many serious romantic relationships that have fallen apart after a short time. Um, I've only ever dated three people. Uh, one of them was for a year and a half. Uh, one of them was for like a month. And then uh, my current relationship with Kayla, it's like two and a half years. So no, <laughs> I'm gonna say it does not apply because um, I'm gonna cut myself some slack. I have at some point in my life been given a mild reprimand or warning by the authorities on the condition that I did not repeat my offense, yet nevertheless ended up repeating the offense anyway. So I actually got pulled over by the same cop twice in one day. It was going through my town and that morning I got pulled over on the way to school for speeding and he stopped and gave me a speeding ticket and was like, you gotta slow down going through here or whatever. And, but, but let me just say like, side note, the guy was kind of a jerk about it to begin with because he pulls me over. He's like, you were going 16 over. I could take you to jail right now. I could throw you in jail. And I'm like, I'm 16 years old. <laughs> if you think that throwing me in jail would fix the problem, it wouldn't. So anyway, he gives me a ticket and then I leave and I go to school. And then later that evening, uh, I also had a tail light out. I got pulled over by him again. And as soon as I saw like it was the same kind of cruiser, I was like, it better not be him. And then it was him. So then that guy comes back to the window and he was like, you got a tail light out. I guess you're just all kinds of reckless, aren't you? And I was like, officer, listen, like I'm driving my mom's car. My car is in the shop and she has a tail light out and they're expensive. And I gave like this whole thing about how I couldn't and then like he like called me lucky because he was like I could have put you in jail earlier I'm not gonna do that but I could have just remember that which like this goes to anyone out there who may be a cop or otherwise if you feel like throwing a 16 year old in jail because they were going too fast on an empty road is a good use of not only your time and their time but taxpayer money um you may need to rethink your career choice <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give myself a no but there has been like weird instances like that. I remember one time um, I was shooting guns on my own property, uh, or at least it was the property of my friend. And while we're shooting, the police come up and they're like, hey, you can't be doing that. And then we explain that this is our property. And like, it, it wasn't at like two in the morning either. We weren't disturbing the peace. It's like noon. Um, and the cop just kept being like, yeah, well, uh, people don't like the sounds of gunshots, like from two hills over. It's like, okay, sorry. So we were like, are we doing anything illegal? And he's like, no, but you shouldn't. So we waited for him to leave and then we just kept doing it. So maybe I got a bit of a rebellious streak in me. I don't know, maybe in a little fun cutesy kind of way. I'm gonna give myself a one on that. I have an easy or unconstrained social style. I mean, this is definitely stylish and it's definitely not constrained. So that's definitely a two. I am a pathological liar. <laughs> uh, no, of course not. Why do you ask? I feel incredibly guilty every time I've lied, even about like the most minor things. I remember one time I like called my mom crying when I was a kid um, because she had asked what I had to eat that day. And I was like, oh, we had McDonald's. But then later I remembered it wasn't McDonald's, it was like Burger King or something. And I just, in my brain was like, oh no, I have lied. So like I took my dad's phone and like called her crying saying I lied. Um, so yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'm a pathological liar. I have poor behavioral controls and find it hard to keep my impulses in check. I think I'm rather reserved. Like I've put out, putting out a seven part rant about Epstein and evil blood sucking elites. So yeah, I think I've got pretty good self-control. I display a lack of remorse or guilt. I am guilty about everything all the time. <laughs> like not only the line or being mean to the little girl like I mentioned earlier, but also just like stuff. I'm 100% guilty, so I'm gonna say it does not apply. I lack realistic long-term goals. In other words, I am either drifting through life or chasing grandiose schemes that fail to pan out. So this would be like recklessness when it comes to finances and stuff. Um, 
I don't think I've got non-realistic long-term goals. Like when it comes to YouTube and stuff like that, I'm still amazed I'm over like 10 subs. Like 10, like I say it all the time, but 10,000 people is a number that's too big to comprehend. And that number keeps getting bigger and it's a lot. And I really do thank you all so much for that, uh, for sticking with me through it. But I wouldn't say I'm non-realistic because at this point, really, everything that's happening to me is non-realistic and I am in a fantasy land of make-believe and all you guys are just part of my collective delirium uh, and none of you are real. As a matter of fact, I'm probably in a mental asylum right now, like padded up and I'm just like talking into a corner and I'm just imagining the microphone and the camera and all of my subscribers, so... Those are things that keep me up at night. But yeah, that doesn't apply. My goals are very non-existent. I am overly impulsive. That's kind of like the same question that got asked a couple ago, if like you have impulse control. So I'm gonna say the same thing does not apply. I live like a parasite on others. <laughs> Example by borrowing money I will never pay back, cynically exploiting others for favors, etc. Um, I have a YouTube channel, which means all of my finances are done by exploiting others. <laughs> like you guys clicking on this video and watching right now, that's how I make a living. That's how I eat. That's how I exist. So you guys doing that for me allows me to keep going. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> Which thank you for watching as always. But the very fact that you're watching this video right now is how I make a living. So I'm gonna say applies very well. <laughs> I am characterized by shallow emotional responses. Um, considering I just gave like a 30 minute speech about a mean thing I said in the second grade, I'm gonna say does not apply. I have a habit of blaming others for my own problems and generally do not accept responsibility for my own actions. Nope, same as the guilty thing, everything is my fault all the time. I am responsible for every bad thing that has ever happened to me and I'm so sorry. <laughs> there is like a common trait that's seen out of people who sort of exhibit dangerous characteristics of personality like this, that everything's everyone else's problem, therefore they don't have to correct themselves. But yeah, I constantly, fear messing up all the time so it does not apply i have a history of promiscuous sexual behavior does this include the 400,000 people who call me dad for some reason i'm a good little christian boy so that does not apply but i just want to take that side note to say i'm so thankful that people on the internet have decided to call me dad and not daddy <laughs> because obviously the latter has weird connotations around it but dad is so casual, it's just like, hey dad, you wanna go play catch? Which, of course son, I'd love to. But it could be a lot worse. <laughs> I have an excessive need for stimulation and am prone to boredom. Um, that applies very well. <laughs> I started a YouTube channel because I was getting bored and of course wanted to and wanted to like put content out there. But like, I sit around like playing video games while also listening to a YouTube video and messaging people on Discord. like. I, I completely understand that I am one of those people who are like overstimulated all the time. Um, I think Bo Burnham even talked about it in a special inside where he was like, just make sure you never think a thought, just always have something going so that way you don't think, which yeah, is uh, a problem I understand, but a hundred percent applies very well. All right, finish and final results are, hold up. Oh, it's, it's on like a scale four. I am 28.5% more psychopathic than the average person. And given my YouTube channel, I'd say that checks out. But I do not qualify as a psychopath on the psychopath checklist. Oh, they give you like details about yourself, okay? All right, so right here is the info. Like, so gray is like population average. Red is a psychopath threshold and the black bar is me. So, you know, <laughs> higher up there, I have a YouTube channel, so sure. Oh, okay, it took me a second to figure out how to read it. The other bars next to it are other details I exhibit compared to the psychopath threshold. So the psychopathic interpersonal style here seems pretty close to the threshold, which uh, the description on that reads, it denotes selfishness, callousness and the remorseless use of others. 
I see. I tested high on it because I said I'd take money from you guys. <laughs> People high in this trait are characterized by shallow, emotional lives, superficial charm, <laughs> manipulatives, and lack of empathy. So because I said I have a YouTube channel where I make money by you guys watching, and I also called myself charming, it puts me way up there. Okay, well, you know... I'll, I'll take that one, whatever. And then the one I tested lowest in was overt antisocial features, which says include reactive anger, criminality, and a lack of impulse control. The likelihood is low that people who rate high in this dimension will mend their ways. So I'm not dangerous, which is a plus. And then like I said, I wanna check it against the real McCoy to just see real quick. So I've got like the real test pulled up, which yeah, I, I see what they did. They took these, concepts that a psychiatrist would check for in the person they're interviewing and then just sort of ask them in a like personal format or sort of like put them in a sentence basically so yeah again this isn't official this isn't any like big deal test at all it's just for fun uh and i thought it was pretty fun so i hope you had fun too and I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. I will leave a link to the original test that I took here in the description as well as the more official test so you can see how they're actually supposed to be performed with sort of a deeper explanation about the test itself. Um, like I said, like testing high on this for one does not mean you are a psychopath and if you are a psychopath that does not make you some evil bad person. It just means your brain works a little differently than some other people. Um, like there's a lot of confusion about that, especially when it comes to how horror movies treat the concept and all that. So just like putting that out there, <laughs> you're not any less of a person just because you're slightly different in your mental functions. Um, but I thought that this was interesting to go through and look at the questions. What I'm probably, well, what I will do in the future now that we understand what it is, I will mention the checklist whenever I come across a serial killer. So as I do the rest of the iceberg, whenever uh, it says that so-and-so scored a 37 out of 40, I haven't been mentioning that, but I will now. Uh, Cause I think it's neat. I think it's really cool that there's like a 20 question checklist that has been used in court that just not a lot of people know about, which is why I thought it would be fun to like show this out here. So uh, thank you all for watching. Um, you guys are the best. 410,000 subscribers. Um, it's weird. It's like, so I, I still can't get over 10,000 and then like my mind's blowing at 400. So then add another 10,000 to that. And you guys are like, it's, it's hard. I can't process it. You guys are fantastic. I am growing at a rate I never thought possible. And, um, I really love you guys and it really means a lot. And I made, I made jokes in like this video about like, he, he, ha, ha. Um, I take advantage of you guys, but really, uh, I just want to make content that you enjoy, uh, or that you would, I, I feel so honored that you would spend your time to watch my videos. Um, and I just want to make content that's worthy of your all's time. And I hope that it is. And it, it really means a lot that you guys watch my stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I love you all to death. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me in a way I can't even imagine. Thank you to my top tier patrons, as you can see here. Um, you guys are fantastic, and I couldn't do it without you. I say it a lot, but I really couldn't. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. There's going to be more Iceberg stuff out soon. There's a really big collaboration that I'm working on right now with several other YouTubers that may be a bit, but I'm looking forward to it when it does come out. Um, but just thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one.